Good morning and welcome to our daily devotional today on this Thursday of Holy Week. Today is Maundy Thursday and tonight we are going to have a worship service posted online at 6.30 for you to worship with us and observe the holiday that is Maundy Thursday. Uh, it, it's going to be a wonderful service, so I hope that you'll be able to join us and worship with us. But this morning for our daily devotional, we're going to do something slightly different. Uh, it's going to be related to Maundy Thursday, but it's still going to, but it's going to be different at the same time. This evening, we're going to be talking about foot washing. So today, it's only appropriate that we talk about the Last Supper or communion. So, but before we get to that, I want us to have an activity real quick. For our activity, I want you to ima- to remember a time when a loved one of yours passed away. I want you to remember uh, whoever it is, and I want you to remember the last memory that you had with them. I want you to remember these the good memories or the bad memories that you associate that is the last memory with them prior to their passing. And and um, when you get that in your head, I then want you to think about um, what in your life reminds you of that person. Are there certain things that you do? Are there certain words that you hear, certain songs that you hear, or anything that kind of reminds you of them? in your daily life? Or is it something that you do special to remember them? Is it somewhere that you go? Something that you eat, something that you smell, something that you say, something that you do in general? These are important aspects that I want us to consider today as we're moving forward into talking about the Last Supper. Now, let us hear the scripture for today, which comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 17 through 29. Hear now the word of God. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My name is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the the Passover meal. And when it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord, he answered. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be it would have been better that one not have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Last Supper is celebrated in the the church um, on occasion. Some churches do it weekly, some churches do it monthly, some do it a quarter. And this is the, the reason behind it is because it is such a momentous occasion. It's something that we try to remember because it reminds us of Jesus Christ, of his death and his resurrection. Because when he says, this is my body broken for you, he's referring to his body physically being broken as a sacrifice and being crucified. And when he says, this is my, my blood of the new covenant poured out, 
he's talking about his blood pouring out of his body when he is bleeding to death upon the cross. These are things that we remember. It's a gruesome thing to remember, but we do remember it because it helps us know what God has done through, uh, for us through Jesus Christ. This is the reason that we celebrate Holy Week and Easter, because we're living, we're following Jesus his last days, leading to the cross, and then the resurrection on Easter Sunday. The thing is, is when we think about the Last Supper, it is a, there are multiple iterations of it. If you read each of the Gospels, you've got a different version, slightly, of what happens in that room with the disciples. Today we read Matthew's account. Tonight, with the worship service, we're going to look at John's, which focuses more on foot washing. But you have to turn it, tune into that to learn more about that. This, though, we learn about, this is the liturgy that you typically hear when you are partaking in communion. When the pastor or the preacher is given the, the sacramental liturgy, he says these words, this is my body broken for you, and then this is my blood of the covenant. These things are said because it is to help us remember. It is a remembrance. As Methodists, we see this as a remembrance of Jesus' mighty acts. Not as, in some denominations of Christianity, they believe that this is the actual physical body and physical blood of Christ. And in some instances, it actually becomes the physical body and the physical blood, depending on which denomination you're looking at. It's called transubstantiation when you have these elements of bread and wine or juice, and then when they are consecrated, they actually turn into the real body and the real blood of Jesus. This is, that's what that's called. That's not what we do in Methodism, but nonetheless, no matter how you view it, no matter how you consider uh, communion and the elements. We are remembering Jesus Christ and the sacrifice made by him for the sake of humanity, for the sake of the world. The reason I had you think about a loved one before they passed away is because I've been reflecting on my own life recently. I had a loved one pass away that I cared about, and I know they cared about me for many years. And I was trying to honor their memory by thinking about the last memory I had of them. And what I found in that time of reflection and meditation and prayer was I found that the last memory I had of her, my cousin, stood out to me. It was very, very clear in my mind. I find this to be a solemn thing. Saddening, yes, but quite solemn. What I decided to do in that moment was to honor her and her memory by sitting there and thinking about her, thinking about that moment and remembering what happened. When we come to the table and we partake in communion, when we're listening to the liturgy leading up to the partaking of the elements and the, and the consecrating, we are remembering Jesus. We are remembering what he did. And I can imagine that the disciples who were sitting in this room with Jesus, the person who they've been following for such a long time, the one that they looked up to, the one they were learning from, all of this, and he said to them these things. And maybe they really just didn't understand it. Probably not. That's a common theme in the Gospels. But they will. After he dies, and after he is resurrected especially, 
they will remember that moment. They will remember those words. They will remember the details of that night. We have the different uh, details for the different gospel accounts, the different perspectives written down, so that way we can read these different perspectives and see what, how different people remembered that night. Because different things stand out to different people. If you have three people who witness the same event, three people are going to give you three different stories. They might be similar, but they're going to be different. This is a reality we live in. When we read today's account, we can we we see the the disciples in there and he says and when Jesus says one of you betrays me they got uneasy and even Judas was like it wasn't me if you say so Judas i think this is important for us to recognize as a people that these things stand out to us the little details sometimes the disciples will remember that Judas said it wasn't me. That he lied. They will remember that Jesus told them all that somebody in this room has betrayed me. But most of all, they will remember the words that he said about his body being broken and the blood of the new covenant. Because when you have, when you usually have a covenant, blood is what seals the deal. My prof the, my professor in seminary, Dr. Lamont, he he was infamous for for saying that you know when there's a covenant, something's gonna get cut, and <laughs> it was it was really funny, but it's true because blood had to be shed to seal the deal in the covenant. Think about that for a moment. I want you to consider this as we go about our day today. As we're coming towards the end of Holy Week. As we're coming towards Jesus' actual death, which we will observe tomorrow in good, uh, our Good Friday service. I want you to recognize how important communion really is because we are remembering such a brave and courageous act that Jesus did for us out of love and care and mercy. None of us deserved it. None of us earned it. God sent him and he did it just for us. As you remember your loved ones, as you remember those times that are very special, those later mem uh, memories, remember that those memories stick with you because they're meaningful. And likewise, with these, this instance of communion and la the Last Supper, we remember it because it is meaningful. I wonder to you today, I challenge you today to think about your life and the things that you find meaningful. Why do you find them meaningful? And I challenge you to think about Jesus and how he died. And think about this Last Supper. And if you were in the room with him in the, as one of the twelve, how would you have reacted? Imagine you don't know what's actually going to happen to Jesus. Imagine you don't know. How would you have reacted? And how would you remember that moment? How would it stick with you in your mind? How would it affect you after the fact? Would it positively affect you? Would it negatively affect you? Would it paralyze you? Would it just scare you? Would you be distraught? Would it motivate you and inspire you to do better, to do more? 
How would it affect you? I hope that you're able to reflect on these things this day as we continue through our Holy Week journey. Because Lent is almost over. But Easter is imminent. Now, friends, after since we have done all that, I would like to read a passage from a wonderful book called the Celtic Daily Prayer Book. It is a, an amazing book. It's a thick book, but it's meant for daily prayer. It's not something you just go straight through reading. You can, but I, I, I wouldn't normally recommend it. Um, but there's a passage in here um, in the approaching Easter section, and I want to read it to you this day. And this is what it says. Friend, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey and companions on the road. We are here to help each other. Walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you, and in the nighttime of your fear, I will hold out my hand to you to speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping. When you laugh, I will laugh with you. I'll, I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony born of all we've known each other, known together, of Christ's love and agony. Friend, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Some words are just wonderful to hear. And tonight especially, we talk about servant servanthood. But remember, God gave Jesus to us, and Jesus was a servant to all of humanity. He served us all, and he told us to go and do likewise. The Last Supper reminds us of his sacrifice for us, so we too should be sacrificing for him. We too should be servants in the world. And it starts with you. You. You can be a servant to someone around you. And they can be a servant to you. If you let them. Pride gets in the way of that, of that most of the time. I can attest to that. But if you open up and let them be Christ to you. And if you're open to being Christ to others, through your service, your words, your actions, all the above, you can leave a lasting memory that will truly show Christ to them. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to remember who you are and remember what you sent your son Jesus to do to remember exactly what happened at the Last Supper when Jesus told the disciples exactly what was going to happen to him. As we remember in our communion and we remember in all of our daily lives, help us see Jesus in all that we do. Help us be sacrifices just as Jesus was. Help us to be the ones in the world that can show Christ's light through us, because he has already given it to us. Give us the strength to continue through this holy week and continue to give us the, your power and your love so that way we can honor you in all that we do. We ask all these things through your Son, who is the Christ in which we pray. Amen. Go in peace and stay, friends. Serve the Lord always. And thanks be to God.